in the equity quadrant. Look, he got the best performer, which is not really saying much, the June NASDAQ. The NASDAQ rallied most of the day, making it two up sessions and two down sessions in the last four. Now, of course, there is a little bit of time left in the session today, and the NASDAQ is struggling to stay positive, so that could change. But during those four sessions, the NASDAQ has dropped a little bit more than a half of 1%. And since reaching its all-time highs on March 21st, it's dropped a little bit more than 1.6%. At the halfway point of the week, the NASDAQ is down a third of 1%. And if it stayed here, it would represent its second consecutive down week and its fourth down week in the last five. Despite this, over those five sessions, the NASDAQ is still up about three tenths of 1%, give or take what happens on the close today. The high today, 18,451.75, was up two thirds of a percent. The low, 18,232.50, was down just a smidge more than a half of 1%. Jerome Powell had an interview today and his answers maintained the same tone at Stanford University this afternoon. The interview questions, while not tough, were not softball either. They were pretty on point. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell maintained that the Fed's inflation target is 2%. He didn't acquiesce to a higher target, for example. But he does think the current level of rates is slightly restrictive and is a risk to the economy. And he thinks the balance is skewed toward those risks and towards cuts being appropriate this summer, although that's not a direct quote. He didn't exactly say that. So because of that, Treasury yields took a breather across the curve, coming off a little bit in the front end, staying unchanged through the balance of the curve, maybe even being about a basis point lower. Meaning, depending on where you looked across the yield curve, they were unchanged if you just kind of gave it balance. And that gave didn't give the NASDAQ a tailwind but certainly eliminated the headwind of higher yields, at least for today.